so the question came up should I go and get my dealer's license big question and there's a lot of responsibility and financial responsibility that comes along with having a dealer's license as well as experience you will know when you're buying and selling cars when it is time to get your dealer's license in the beginning when you start I would advise selling cars one or two buying and selling friends and family's vehicles see how you like it see if you enjoy it see if you're okay with dealing with people see if you have people skills also see if you can negotiate you know, negotiating is a few is a huge part of this business it's even more so huge on the phone through text messaging social media than it ever has been before nowadays what's even harder is that the internet is has so much information anybody can find the information and it's basically right now if you're not trying to be a volume based dealer then you need to think outside the box you need to find cars network with people get out there get your name out there uh, go around to all the different dealerships talk to the wholesale guys see if you can buy cars before they go out to the, the auction stuff like that before I go off on a tangent I want to go back to what I said before about is it time to get my dealers license like I said only you will know that and it is taking on a huge responsibility responsibilities that you have to take on in Florida because I don't know all the other 49 states that you could possibly get a dealers license in uh, plus Alaska and Hawaii so in Florida you need garage liability insurance a place of business with a working toilet you cannot have a dealership at an efficiency at an apartment at a townhouse at a home on the side of a home it doesn't work state DMV inspector comes out they inspect the property to make sure it's zoned by the city so you're gonna have to get an approval from the city you're gonna have to have it zoned and the DMV matches that information up with their records to make sure that the zoning that the city has is permitted for the DMV along with that zoning you're going to have to have two requirements from the DMV department yeah it's good that it's zoned in that area and you can have a dealer's license there but the DMV actually requires at least one parking spot and one vehicle inside if you're doing online sales only one vehicle to show on the inside of your warehouse or your showroom you're going to need dealer tags and you can get those after you get your garage liability insurance because your dealer tags are actually attached to your garage liability insurance you need to file for your state resale certificate uh, the resale certificate will be placed with your corporation you need a corporation I think I told you that last but not least pass the Florida dealers license test uh, it's quite simple it doesn't take rocket science to uh, figure it out figure wise your garage liability insurance mine for my first year was about twenty five hundred dollars uh, they give you a break in the beginning you can put five hundred dollars down and you can pay over a period of time uh, there's a couple different insurance agencies I am NOT uh, promoting any of them I'm not getting any residual income from any of them so you're gonna have to do your own homework I know of some uh, if you comment in below I can get with you on a couple different ones not every single one is located here in Florida there are some that are located outside of the United or, excuse me outside of Florida so your garage liability insurance is going to be a major part of your financial responsibility and also your rent you know because of the zoning of the city the city has different zones where you can place your dealership your warehouse you know it can't be in a public shopping center or a grocery store center uh, where there's retail stores all over the place they're not going to have you have uh, cars out there in the parking lot or where customers need to park different areas of the city allows you to have uh, a warehouse
warehouse or a showroom. I've always had a warehouse when I was able to go off on my own and get my own dealer's license. Your rent on your warehouse or whatever place you're gonna rent, uh, you know, is also a big part of your responsibility. So, you know, if you add up your rent every single month, it's gotta be at least $700, $750 plus your garage liability insurance, the numbers can get into a thousand plus very easy. So if you're first starting out, you need to be making a minimum of a thousand dollars. That doesn't even include your temp tags that you need to have for customers after you sell a car, you have to pay for temp tags. Those are about $2.50 a piece. And you have to pay a tag lady, or if you're gonna go and, and run, you know, time is money at the at the tag agency. You know, it's a very long wait. Um, so there's a couple different factors you got to factor into your monthly nut that you're gonna have a thousand dollars plus your FP&L bill or your power bill that you're gonna have, and your tag and title work couriers that you're gonna pay if you are gonna pay them, and if not, what is your time worth? There is an option that you have if you don't want to take on the responsibility of having a dealer's license. It's what I've done in the past, and it's perfectly legal, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, you can be an agent of a dealership. The agent is allowed to purchase vehicles from the auto auction. They're allowed to buy and sell on the dealership's behalf. They're allowed to do paperwork on the dealership's behalf. The only thing that I wouldn't get into if you are doing, uh, if you're working as a broker under a dealership, you know, this is obviously an independent dealership. You're not going to become a broker of a Maroonie Ford or, uh, you know, Auto Nation. Um, the one thing that I would tell you to do is don't get yourself involved with the taxes. You know, you don't want to have to turn taxes in. You want to keep your paperwork to a minimum and you know usually a uh, dealerships uh, independent dealerships they charge people between uh, $150 a deal the $250 a deal to $300 a deal and sometimes there's a, a yearly a yearly fee you're gonna have to figure out what you're gonna do about a plate if you're gonna be working under a a dealership's an license. independent dealership's license. For instance, mm -hmm. if you buy a car at an auction and you're trying to get that car home, you're not going to be able to get it home unless you A, transport it on a tow truck, which is going to cost money and time, or drive it, but you're going to have to have either a transporter license plate, which I do not recommend, or a dealer's license plate, which is ultimately what you need and if you have the money to go ahead and it's you're ready you know it's, your, it's time to go ahead and separate from being a small guy to an independent dealer and taking on that nut monthly nut then by all means go and get a plate with your garage liability insurance and drive to and from the auctions after you buy the vehicles you're gonna have to somehow persuade the independent dealer to put you under his garage liability insurance policy and hopefully you don't have a DUI or a suspended license or any accidents because if he sees that or he or she sees that in the independent dealership, they're not gonna want their rates to go up to, to bother with you to sell a couple cars every month. So there's a lot of factors that take place. A, the first thing I would tell you to do is start off with Craigslist, see how you like it. If you're a novice at this or if you're just starting and you want to get into buying and selling cars B if you're in the intermediate stage where you want to go ahead and work under somebody's license you want to take that next step you're done with the Craigslist thing you're done with buying and selling that way then get under somebody's license talk to them have a meeting with them you know butter them up get them chocolates or whatever you got to do to let them use your dealers license uh, or their dealer's license. If you take it to the, the, the full extent where you're ready to go from the intermediate stage to the expert stage, I guess you could say, you're gonna have to go ahead and break away from that shell and go off on your own. And if you know the business and if you've done it and you sold cars and you're, 
you're very good at it, there's no way you wouldn't prosper in this uh, in this career. So that's all I got for whether or not you should get your dealer's license now. Again, if you have any um, questions or comments, or you want to ask me a question about how long does it take to do this or how much do you think this would be, go ahead, comment in the in below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Also subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be coming out with more and more content every day. Uh, I'm actually filming like multiple, multiple videos in one day and then I'm going to go ahead and edit them and put them on YouTube when I get a chance. Thanks for watching and subscribe.